Hillary. the Lord has made. Amen. Okay. Yes. Let us rejoice and be, be glad, glad in it. it. All right. Because like we are gathered here today to celebrate the remarkable, tenacious, yes. relentless, talk about it, advocate for justice and equality one of the leaders of our country on its long march toward a more perfect union. And as we remember her, we need to remember how much she would want us to continue that fight. Yeah. Amen. Looking around today, I know that we all wish Sheila were still with us. Not only because she would love this, <laughs> but because we need her. Amen. We need her constant reminder that we are better than this. That we can do more together that we can stand against hate and bias and bigotry and prejudice to come together as one nation under God. Amen. To Elwin and Erica and Jason and Michael, thank you for sharing her with us. Bill and I met with the family beforehand and traded stories about our friendship and relationship going back so many years. I told Elwin that he and Sheila and Bill and I had something in common. We all met at Yale. Their marriage lasted 51 years. Amen. will be 50 years old next year. All right, all right. You've heard from some of her colleagues and all who are here with us could tell you even more stories about how fearless and tireless she was, stepping up for education, for women's rights and civil rights and voting rights how she stood strong for health care and comprehensive immigration reform, criminal justice reform. She spent years working to make Juneteenth a federal holiday to memorialize yes. the end of slavery. I remember coming to Houston after Katrina, with Bill and Sheila, and a young senator who hitched a ride from Illinois, Barack Obama, yes. <laughs> because Sheila wanted to show us what the generosity of this great city was doing as it took in thousands and thousands of refugees from Louisiana after that horrific storm. Mm -mm. She was so proud to represent the people of Houston. She was so proud to wear that cowboy hat. <laughs> you know, as women in traditionally male halls of power, we found common cause and camaraderie. Here's one example that really sticks in my heart because it was something Sheila and I worked on for years together. 
When I was in the Senate and she was in the House, we got a call summoning both of us to come meet with Dr. Dorothy Height, Dr. C. Dolores Tucker, E. Faye Williams, and other iconic leaders from the National Congress of Black Women. They said it was time to have a statue of a black woman in the capital of the United States. And they knew who it should be, Sojourner Truth. Well, that sounded like an easy yes to Sheila and me. Sojourner Truth, an icon of American history, an abolitionist who had been born into slavery, an activist for the rights of slaves and freed blacks and women. She escaped to freedom with her infant daughter in 1826, and then she went to court to recover her son in 1828, becoming the first black woman to win such a case against a white man. Wow. Now, does that remind you of anybody? <laughs> sure reminded me of my friend Sheila. Wow. And we got to work, and then we faced one delay after another. Years went by. I'd see Sheila, we'd meet for coffee, she'd call me up, she'd, what are we going to do? We have to keep doing this, we have to keep making the case. Well, eventually, eventually, we were successful. And on a glorious day in 2009, we gathered in the Capitol for the unveiling of the Sojourner Truth statue. Cicely Tyson recited Sojourner Truth's famous speech, Ain't I a Woman? Because just as Sheila always did, Sojourner understood that prejudice, inequality anywhere affected all of us. That the causes of women's rights and civil rights were indivisible. She understood that truth and fought for that legacy. And all those years later, I was standing next to my friend who did exactly the same. We traveled together, we laughed together, we shared pictures of our grandchildren. I was deeply grateful when she served as co-chair of my first campaign for president. I I will miss her, I will miss her when we're up for a tough fight. I will miss her every time we celebrate a hard won victory. We lost her too soon. Yes. We could use her voice now. Absolutely. But come next January. Amen. When our first woman Woo! Truth said, 
if the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone, <laughs> these women together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. Yes. Sheila spent her good, full life turning the world right side up again for all of us. Amen. That's what we are called to do. And when we do, it will be in part because Sheila's legacy lives on in all the women who she supported, for whom she blazed a trail. Goodbye, my dear friend. We loved you. We will miss you. We promise we will carry your good work onward. Godspeed. Amen. Amen. Thank you for giving me the chance to say a few words about a woman I love too. I want to thank the people of Houston for sending Sheila to Congress 15 times. <laughs> And for giving her something a lot of members often don't have, the space and support, not only to take care of her district, but to lead on national and global issues. Not every district will do that, but hers did, and God bless you all for doing that. All right. So Sheila came to Congress in 1995, and our party and her president had just taken a terrible lick in the midterms because we wanted to give everybody health care. <laughs> because I believed in a background check before somebody brought a gun, and I didn't see why everybody needed a salt room. That's right. But they beat us. And that time, as nearly as I could tell, they beat us fair and square. We got, it was a different, uh, different time. And then there she was, all dressed up and ready to roll, and determined that we had to keep fighting for what we thought was right. And before you know it, she made it onto the smallest list we kept in the White House when I was there. It was called the Just Say Yes list. <laughs> Members I remember being on it were future speaker Nancy Pelosi, Ted Kennedy, who sort of helped me, brought a list into every meeting I ever had with him. We could have been talking about, you know, the Middle East. He wanted to know where the sewer money was for some place in Massachusetts. <laughs> and Barbara Mikulski from Maryland who was under five feet tall and was the champion boxer in terms of getting what she wanted. 
So pretty soon, Sheba made the list. <laughs> she was the only freshman on the list, and the, the just say list meant this. Whatever it is they want, <laughs> sooner or later you're going to do it. <laughs> So you might as well save the taxpayers the time and money of passing them over. It was almost like a tiger had gotten control of your calf. <laughs> you look down and you'd see this huge creature just eating in your leg. <laughs> and finally you realize You'd be free if you just took a deep breath <laughs> and gave him. Whatever she wanted was always good. It was good for somebody. It was trying to help somebody. It was, you know, I thought it was great. We, we do all 30 years stuff, and there she is with President Biden still trying to make Juneteenth the holiday. <laughs> Something especially important to Texas, yep. as we all know. Yep. Amen. And through all those years, she did her job and in the process became a real friend to Hillary and me. And you just heard what Hillary said. I remember when they were trying to run me out of town. <laughs> she was actually basically said, oh, I like my president all right, but I really love the Constitution, and I don't think I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> and she was just amazing. One of her critics once said she was an acquired taste, and I said, I acquired it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> acquired taste, stop. Look, you know, last time I checked, none of us were perfect. The most important thing is that every day you get up. Amen. Amen. And you do your best. Yes. Amen. And you keep going. Absolutely. Yeah. And you play the hand you've been dealt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The last time we talked, not long before she passed, mm. she, uh, she said, you know, life's funny. And maybe that mayor's race worked out the way it was supposed to. Mm. 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 And we wish the mayor well. Don't we all of us. Thank you. Uh, oh, Lord, he and I. <laughs> things happen. You don't think they're going to happen. You don't know what they mean. All you can do is get up every day and play the hand you've got. So now we have a hand to play without our friend. But I'll tell you something. If you were a person of faith, yeah. that's right. That's right. And you ever met Sheila Jackson Lee? My God. You know she is in there preparing her scorecard. Yeah. <laughs> Too funny. And pretty soon she'll be hovering over us. <laughs> Even score. Did we make the most of this stuff? Do we still believe this is a country of we the people? Yes. Oh, charged with forming a more perfect union? Yes. I promise you she does. I treasure her every minute that we spent. I even love the few times I gamely tried to resist her in previous <laughs> to do something or another that I wound up doing anyway. <laughs> I remember after five minutes talking to Sheila Jackson Lee, I realized 
that the thing I worried most about, which is that she would somehow suffer for taking Barbara Jordan's seat, was no sweat. Just by showing up and doing her best and being who she was, it would become her seat because it was her seat. And for 30 years, through sunshine and storm, we were friends. If you're lucky enough to live a long life, I was thinking about that. I was sitting there holding Jesse's hand and I thought, Hillary once had to throw him out. <laughs> of the Arkansas governor's mansion because we were celebrating the 20th anniversary or the, maybe it was the 30th anniversary of the Little Rock Central High School and Jesse wouldn't go home and I wouldn't shut up. <laughs> I'm so done. <laughs> a lot of us have a long history together. But we were all lucky. Thank you, Jesus. To live at this time. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Even with the terrible yeah. things that have happened, even with the disappointments, even <coughs> to be able to serve, to stand up for what you believe in, to keep pushing ahead, to keep trying to make our union more perfect, it is a gift. Don't you wish that that gift could be returned to the people of Ukraine today. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about this, all over the world, there are people who have little daughters that may not ever get to be Sheila Jackson Lee, mm -hmm. may not ever get to go to college or become lawyers or do things to help other people. There's plenty to be done. Mm -hmm. So my plea to you is that it's really nice. You can't imagine how nice it is if you're an old gray-haired guy and you were younger than everybody else doing what you were doing for most of your life and one day you woke up and you were the oldest person in the room. <laughs> and for the life of me, I couldn't tell you how it happened. <laughs> but the really wonderful thing is to keep giving the future yeah. Yeah. to younger people. Yeah. 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 She wanted to do that. And as Hillary said, she's got a sorority made that's fixing to do it, I think, in November. Yes. And So, I ask you to remember her always in that way. I showed up, I made the most of the hand I had. I tried to play it for today and for tomorrow. All right. Yeah, I did it for myself, I love this stuff. <laughs> but I also did it for tomorrow. Yep, thank Amen. you, thank you. We are the longest lasting democracy in human history now. Mm -hmm. Because we had enough people like Sheila Jackson Lee. Thank you, Jesus. Who, who loved politics, liked to play the game, loved winning, hated losing. But we're in it for tomorrow. So, I thank you, all of you, for what you said earlier today. I did try to help show her around when I, she showed up. I could see that she was something different. Mm -hmm. Who might bend but never break. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Who might make a mistake now and then, would it be one of the head, not the heart? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
who really believed that we were all created equal. Mm -hmm. yeah. And therefore, we deserve the chance to prove it. Yes. And that without a caring, loving, disciplined, ferociously competitive <laughs> government and the rules that should apply in the private sector, too many people wouldn't get it. And all of her life, I watched her try to find new ways to deliver the goods. Today, we celebrate her success. Even more, we celebrate her effort. Mm -hmm. Well, in so many ways, when you think about America, she's about as good an example of delivered goods as I can imagine. 